Hello and welcome to Techie Chap. In today's episode, I am taking a look at OpenBSD 7.4. I am dipping my toes in yet another BSD variant, this time OpenBSD. So OpenBSD has been around for a long time. Indeed, the copyright for OpenBSD is between 1997 to current. So it really has been around for a very long time. But what is new in OpenBSD 7.4? Well, I can tell you that the OpenBSD team have been very busy since the last release, as you can see from this incredible amount of notes on the website. Of course, one of the things that OpenBSD prides itself on is documentation, and they certainly are not shying away from the task here. There is indeed quite a bit of documentation just listing the new and improved and updated features. So how do we go about downloading OpenBSD? Well, I downloaded the install74.img and burnt that to a USB stick. Now, don't get fooled. Do not download the install74.iso if you are intending to run it on a USB stick, which is what I did first of all. It won't work. Uh, you do need to install or download install74.img to get it running on a USB stick. There are a number of instructions here on how to download and indeed how to create a USB stick using a Unix type operating system. So let's crack on and get on with the actual simple install. And here we are by the magic of video. <laughs> this is actually my laptop screen. And as you can see, uh, I have chosen a slightly Star Wars-esque <laughs> wonky camera angle for some reason to actually record this. But uh, the, once you've booted from the OpenBSD installer, the USB stick, um, install is actually fairly straightforward. And you can more or less get away with mostly the defaults. So as you can see here, I have chosen the standard EM0 as my Ethernet, which is my Ethernet adapter, which is currently plugged in. And I am using AutoComp on that to uh, basically get a IP address from the DHCP server. And then you get prompted to set your root account password and I just uh, need to practice my typing. Um, you do get the option to uh, start SSHD by default. Um, default is actually no but I've said yes. You then get the option to start X Windows System by ZenoDM, and I have said yes to that. Then you get to create a user. In this case, I have created Techie Chap, and uh, as per, I've just put Techie Space Chap as the full name. Put in my password there and uh, it does give you a warning about allowing root ssh login um, in this case in case i need to troubleshoot i am allowing that in this case right on to disk partitioning and here i am just going to use the whole disk now obviously you need to be pretty careful if you are intending on running this alongside another operating system um, Generally, if you are doing this, I would recommend some uh, test laptop or a laptop that's non-critical uh, that you try this on, at least for the time being, uh, until you are happy with running the system. Okay, moving onwards, uh, there is options for proxy servers. Uh, it then asks you where do you want to download the OpenBSD sets from. And then indeed you can select the sets. These are basically the collection of applications uh, to do with OpenBSD. It will then go off and download those. And for the sake of the video, uh, I'm going to fast forward through all of this. There we go. I don't actually have a super fast um, 
broadband or fibre connection uh, or a super fast machine, uh, I'm just fast forwarding the video, so don't be fooled. <laughs> but that's pretty much it. And now we just have to basically reboot the machine and we should be inside a standard X window GUI. And indeed we are. So to record the uh, screen on this standard X window screen and indeed within OpenBSD I'm having to run FFmpeg uh, manually because there isn't actually any sort of screen recorder software available at this point or at least not that I'm aware of. So I'm using FFmpeg and uh, certain command lines to actually record the screen. So let's log in. I'm going to switch over to the uh, root user and we're going to do the first thing that we should do on a new install and that's a firmware update. Uh, it should be that there is no actual uh, updates available and indeed there is not any updates available. So we know that uh, this particular install of OpenBSD uh, 7.4 is actually up to date. Okay, um, so as you can see, again, we are running a standard X window desktop. This is what you get if you just uh, install X. And actually, it's more or less functional. This version of X is actually running uh, Tom's window manager, I think it is, TWN. Um, and uh, that it it does it does work <laughs> as you can see down in the bottom right there you can actually uh, navigate uh, through various screens i think it supports up to nine uh, screens uh, by default um, in the bottom right hand corner and you can actually drag and drop uh, your windows and see a preview of that window uh, in that screen there now openbsd uses uh, the package tool or the PKG tool to manage its packages and uh, to do a search on packages we run the command PKG underscore info minus capital Q and in this case I am downloading or searching for Firefox. So as you can see actually there is various versions of Firefox available uh, so we have 118, 119, 11901, 120 and 12001 as well as the extended support release 115. In this case I am going to install Firefox uh, 12001. So I shall just type this here. Okay, off it goes. Um, I should have said when I was typing that, that actually uh, to install an application, you use the command pkg underscore add. Now I've again speeded uh, things up for the sake of installation, but it doesn't take too long to install Firefox. Indeed, you could run Firefox from within X here. Looking at uh, the memory and CPU usage, you can see that actually uh, it's fairly intense on the CPU and memory usage, but that is because I'm running FFmpeg to record the desktop. And of course, the desktop is running in full HD. Okay, so I'm going to now again do a search, which is again with package underscore info minus capital Q. And this time I am looking for NTFS utilities. So NTFS is something that we will need to install on uh, OpenBSD here. Uh, and this is simply to be able to read uh, USB sticks, SD cards, that sort of thing. Um, because mainly they, uh, they're they either formatted uh, in FAT or NTFS. Uh, and NTFS will support uh, USB devices that are over 4 gig in size. I have also there uh, installed Nano um, as my editor. Uh, that you do get VI uh, by default with OpenBSD, but uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just using Nano. Okay, so I am creating a do as uh, configuration here. Um, and as you can see, uh, this is for a particular set of tools. So all I'm typing here is permit no pass techie pass 
Tucky Chap <laughs> as root and the command is NTFS U mount or mount. And this essentially allows me to mount uh, USB sticks, unmount USB sticks or SD cards uh, and allows me to utilize the NTFS uh, system to actually be able to read uh, those USB sticks. So taking a look at the groups that I am a member of here, um, I can see that I am in the standard Techie Chap group and the operator group and the wheel group uh, by default. But there is another group that I want to add myself to. So again, I'm going to switch user and I am just going to uh, add myself to a group called staff. Now the staff group within OpenBSD is essentially a group that has slightly, um, I want to say, looser permissions. That's probably not quite right, but it has a little bit more in terms of functionality that you can do. So what I'm essentially doing is I am going to be changing a file here that essentially allows uh, a little bit more for applications, a little bit more RAM for applications to run in. So let's just go to forsat etc login.conf and we'll scroll down this file here and we will look for staff. There we go. So staff have fewer restrictions and can log in even when no logins are set. All right, so you can see that the default data size uh, for opening applications there is quite low, uh, just one and a half meg, and uh, I'm sorry, one and a half gig, and I'm just gonna up that because I have 16 gig in this laptop. I'm just gonna change that to 8096, which is probably pretty excessive. Um, I could probably get away with six quite happily um, or even the default probably quite hap happily but I do tend to have a huge amount of uh, Firefox tabs open when I'm working uh, and I would prefer that the application had a, a fair amount of memory to work in. So I'm going to save that and just press return on that and we are back now at the uh, at the root prompt. So I should say that uh, this is, really is all kind of part of the um, the build up to getting the operating system fully functional. So right here we go. We are now going to install XFCE4. Um, Again, uh, this uh, version of XFCE is the latest available version of XFCE. I'm just going to check what I've actually installed here. Um, okay, so you can see there are an awful lot of applications there for XFCE4. And uh, you could, if you wanted to, just type pkg underscore add and then go through each of those uh, and just have a massive paragraph of applications. You could install XFC like that if you so wanted to. However, uh, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to install the packaged uh, XFCE4. Um, and the packaged XFCE4 just makes it a little bit easier. But, you know, if you really wanted a system that was bespoke to you and you only wanted certain applications installed then installing bit by bit um, each of those XFC applications would be the way to go. Right so the command to do this is pkg underscore add XFCE and that will install the latest version XFCE extras uh, and that contains all of those uh, extra applications that you can see there. Then uh, we are going to install XFCE for Power Manager and that just because I'm running it on a laptop and I'm also going to install an application called UPower. Okay, and that is now going to go off and install 
and for the sake of the video again I am just going to speed this all up here off we go uh, and that should install in no time I would say probably it takes about well on my on my connection it takes about eight minutes to install so that's to download and then unpack everything all right there we are so that is uh, all installed and the next part is I'm going to need to change the X session the X session um, to basically tell X to use XFCE and what I'm doing here is I'm just saying echo uh, exec start XFC4 so in other words I am going to put that into and then I'm going to put that into forward slash dot X session there we go and then I'm just going to add a comment on there as well uh, which is just to remind myself what I'm doing and why I've added XX star XFC for into dot X session um, yeah just an easy to read comment to say launch XFC okay so here we are at the default XFC desktop as you can see and a number of applications have been installed as per the XFC extras package and you have a more or less a desktop that you can use day in day out now without many issues yes there is a health warning that comes with OpenBSD at least on this particular review I did manage to nearly brick my Dell laptop uh, when I installed OpenBSD because after reboot rather than starting XFCE the install actually stopped the Dell from booting the Dell was stuck at the Dell screen and I couldn't even enter the BIOS the only way around it was to remove the hard drive and to take that hard drive and install it into my W520 so just be very careful when installing uh, to a physical system particularly something like OpenBSD uh, because you don't want to encounter a nasty bug like that uh, particularly if you have a non-replaceable hard drive or a fixed drive in your system it could really cause problems however despite that now I have it in my W520 I'm pretty satisfied with OpenBSD and I like how it works now I've launched into the nearly finished desktop of OpenBSD that I have put together changed the wallpaper changed the icons just made it look a bit snazzier really I'm installing HTOP here uh, just to show you something quite interesting on OpenBSD and that is that hyperthreading is disabled by default which is the reason you will only see half your processors being used within OpenBSD if you are running an Intel system and this is interesting because back in 2018 OpenBSD actually spotted a problem with the way Intel implemented hyperthreading and that was due to the micro architectural data sampling there was a bug and so OpenBSD being security focused and a small but nimble team were able to fix it by disabling hyperthreading now hyperthreading in and of itself doesn't cause too much of a performance impact to the system and it does shield you from some of the more serious hyperthreading bug issues that are out there in particular the one that was found out by the rest of the industry which was called Spectre back in 2019 so OpenBSD by default protects you from that and that's really a testament to the OpenBSD team and how well they do their job if you need a security focused operating system I would recommend a try of OpenBSD but perhaps try it on a VM first so that's been my review if you have enjoyed it please click on like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next time thanks for watching